Hey everyone, I want to talk about studying Japanese. I came to Japan not knowing very much and I've studied a lot for the past 10 years so now my Japanese is pretty good um, and also I have met a lot of other people who came over uh, people who started studying Japanese when they were here doing ALT work on JET or Interac and then at my current school we have several native teachers and we have one ALT so I get to watch other people when they come over figure out what they want to do. There's a lot of different backgrounds that people have, obviously, and then most people study Japanese a little before they come, and some people study Japanese a lot, which explains why they came here, right? They study Japanese in college, and they come over after they graduate. Well, whatever the level you have, if you're not a native speaker, there are certain things that are going to be difficult for you to do. Some things at the beginning are really scary. Um, for example, going to the dentist or going to the doctor can be pretty intimidating when you don't have the language skills. Uh, because you don't know what they're saying and it's kind of important usually that you do know what they're saying. If you're in a big city, maybe you can find an English speaking doctor or dentist. Uh, I couldn't when I came to Japan and I can now but I don't care because it's on the other side of town and it's more expensive maybe. Then other stuff is not so scary, but it's really important at your workplace. <clears throat> if you're working in a school, then the the teachers that you teach with on a daily basis are English teachers, so they can talk to you. But your bosses, the vice principal and the principal and other teachers around you, probably don't speak a lot of English, and yet they're important. So, for example, when you want to know about your days off, or if you want to schedule a vacation, or if you're feeling sick and you want to go home early or go to the doctor, the English teacher is not the person in charge of that. You can ask an English teacher for help and they will, but the person who makes the decisions about anything involving uh, human resources is the vice principal. So the more you can speak in Japanese with them, the better off you're going to be dealing with that kind of logistical thing. And then there's a calendar on the wall in the staff room. In every staff room in every school in Japan, there's a giant calendar on the wall that lists the events that are happening that month. And it's your job to figure out how to read that so that you know what's going on. Because what will happen is you'll be sitting in the staff room one day and you'll look around and all the other teachers are gone. And later you'll realize they're at a school assembly that you didn't know about. And you'll be upset because everyone went to an event and you walk in 10 minutes late. The first thing is it's okay. If you walk in 10 minutes late, the students think that you were busy with other work. And the other teachers didn't really worry about it because it doesn't matter to them if you show up on time or not. But, of course, you're going to feel embarrassed or bad about that and you want to be on time. And you might think, well, why didn't anyone tell me? But the problem is, it's not clear whose job it is to tell you. Um, the English teachers that you work with are only responsible for English class. They're not responsible for school events. And the principal is responsible, the vice principal is responsible. Different groups organize these events, but the way the information typically gets out is through announcements and things on the calendar. So you really want to learn to read the calendar on the wall. You don't have to know what everything means, but you want to know the word for assembly, and you want to know the word for vacation, and you might want to know the word for tournament, because those are going to be big things that will definitely affect your schedule. So, for language in general, it's best if you can study every day in many different ways, and however you study, you want to keep doing it. Since you come to Japan and you live and work in Japan, the first thing is talk to a lot of teachers in Japanese. Uh, you know, this is a no-brainer. And then the second thing is get involved in the community somehow so you can talk to members of the community in Japanese. And however you want to do that is up to you. Um, you can join a club, or you can go to the bar, or you can hang out at the park. Or if you already have Japanese friends from like a study abroad trip, talk to them. And it's okay to study at work. If you have time to study Japanese at work in your free time, you should do that. Then... There are a lot of different Japanese tests. If you're going to stay in, ja in Japan... If you're going to stay in Japan for two years or longer, I recommend that you take the JLPT, which is a famous Japanese test. Um, and then the longer you stay, the higher levels you can take. But you don't have to rush through it. So start with a level that you think is fairly easy for you and then pass that. 
and then six months later or a year later you can take the next level because when you're here the thing to keep in mind is if you study Japanese you're studying it to make your life better because you can do more if you can speak more and you can understand what people are saying so a test is a test and it's useful on uh, your resume for job applications in the future there's no doubt about it but the most useful Japanese is the Japanese for your life not for your resume so there's no reason to rush through tests you want to study because you're helping yourself every single day when you do it and if you keep that in mind over time and you find good studying methods that you can do for five minutes a day or ten minutes a day they won't feel like a burden at all it won't be a struggle when i study flashcards or when i read kanji websites or when i look up grammar points i'm interested in it because it's stuff that i really want to know because i want to know what the meanings are of things that people say to me or that i heard on the street so when you find good study methods it your motivation goes up a lot and the other thing is the final thing is the final thing is when you start studying you want to keep doing it every day usually in small chunks usually in many different ways and you can really expect to feel an impact after six months looking back on using flashcards which I do a lot it was after about half a year that I realized how much I was learning from them that the vocabulary that came up in conversation was stuff I learned from flashcards in the months before and once you start feeling that connection between your studying habits and your ability to comprehend what people are saying then of course your motivation will continue to go up if you're living in the countryside not that many people speak English so naturally you're gonna want to speak a lot of Japanese if you live in a city it's really important to put yourself in situations where you'll want to speak Japanese because in Tokyo there are so many people who speak English that if you try hard you can get through without knowing much Japanese but on the other hand you came all the way to Japan so if you can uh, you know learn the local language then you can connect with more people and you can really you know feel good about yourself